All right, lads, I've got the formula for how to do well in NRL, NRL Fantasy. Just say that you're playing head-to-head, -head and you'll kill it overall. Promise. Simple as that. Just say it out loud. I say it on this on this uh, on these videos, and I promise it works. If you say you're playing overall and it's your, your main overall team, it's never going to go well. All right, that's how it works. Raiders thirty to ten over the Sharks. What a strange game this was. Twenty nil at half time, and you know Sharks potentially looking at a bit of a comeback. Twenty to ten, uh, and then just you know Raiders went on with it to finish it off. So I believe with a forty four minute effort for seventy two points was uh, incredible. There forty four in base in that time. Well done to him. How we're in Iowa with 52 in his 57 minutes was great. The McInnes one's the interesting one now. 49 points, 59 minutes. So we're getting him at a discount to that, obviously, in the, the lower to, to mid 40s, which is nice. And he'll be slightly above that after this week. And, and we see Fanukin is probably going to be out for a little bit of time now. And is this the time to finally pick up McInnes? The main issue being that they don't play in round 13. So you could potentially still wait till 14 for him. But I think he's going to be a great pickup at some point and it will probably be then. But I think we can um, start to really think about him now as, as a genuine option. He's hit the minutes he's getting through the middle, he's getting through plenty of work now. It's 52 in base. So I think it's we're ready for him to, to start becoming an option. All right, Schneider, 49 for him. So thankfully, you know, a bit of a comeback game. When they were winning, obviously five goals and a sneaky try for him. The three penalties was really annoying, and the three missed tackles was you know, kind of normal. But you know, two turnover tackles helped him out a little bit. Uh, ran the ran the ball as well, and the twenty one tackles. So Schneider's forty nine. We'll take that, and yeah, we'll stop the bleeding in, in terms of his uh, price drops. Starling ended up not getting the start, so Wolford came in and got that you know first twenty eight minutes, which is a little bit scary. Twenty eight's a little bit much. Uh, that twenty twenty five we can cop, but as soon as it got to about twenty seven, twenty eight, I was like, shit, can you get him on already? Um, but almost a PBN of one for him with, with plenty of tackles and you know one turnover tackle there was was nice. So 46, we can cop that, obviously, after last week's lower one. And <clears throat> we know he can score well in that 50-odd minutes, but we'd like to see him getting a few more than 52 if we wanted him to be like a 50-point keeper or close to it. That's for sure. All right, Tarpane with 50, uh, 45 there. Graham, so good to see him get 52 minutes and working back into a nice role. It actually got big points, for, which is strange for him. Uh, if we're being honest, in, in NRL fantasy, he's never been uh, a real great option. He's been around that 40 to 45 point score in a full 80 minutes, so a bit of an outlier for him. But good to see him back uh, and playing, and you know, playing well, playing, being out there really is, is the biggest part for him. Malatalo 45. So if you still own him, which there's still a just under five percent, then you'll you'll take that for sure in a losing side. Nico Hines obviously didn't have his greatest game, but still filled up the stat sheet a bit with three force dropouts, the kick meters as well. As the uh, the running meters there, he obviously is going to do a lot more at seven than he does at fullback, but here's what is there. He still picked up a 44. We'll cop that um, and move on from him in a game where they didn't, you know, they really struggled. If they were to win that game, he would have got a lot more points. So just think about that that way, guys. Forsbro was solid again off the bench. That PPM is incredible every week. Wilton snuck through with a 44. If you still own him, you know, it's not the, not the end of the world. You're getting pretty close to where he's priced at, which is fine. Brayley with 41, so big fall from Grace from the start of the year for him, 45.8 overall average. Um, yeah, and Wolf would end up coming back on uh, partway through that that game as well near the end. They got a 41, so well done to, to him. Nikora with 41 as well. Frawley with 38, so a couple of decent scores for him in uh, in his return these last two games. But we'll see White and back next week. It'll be interesting to see uh, how that team list lines up heading into round 11, that's for sure. So yeah, we spoke about Fanuk and he's going to be out for a little bit, it looks like, so... Uh, yeah, McInnes' option, the option of McInnes becomes a lot more, a lot greater. All right, this is the one we want to talk about, and it's Talakai. And if you picked him up after those big scores, like I decided to, I wanted to take the risk in my team to try and you know, bu bust out a, you know, a bunch of 50, 60, 70 scores uh, in that really nice run that he had, and it just hasn't worked out, it hasn't panned out. So the risk, um, yeah, it, it was the, the, it went to the downside this time. We didn't get the upside. On, on taking that risk, unfortunately, and he's going to start to lose a bit of cash now. So I'm personally probably going to be trading him this week uh, as a center at that price. is just too much. So you bought him a 650 or something, got a bit of a, a price bump at best, uh, but yeah, not, not good enough in, in the scoring tally and, and just a game where they needed to win and, and win well um, and, and for him to, to get plenty of, you know, obviously got plenty of run meters, but to have that momentum where he's just busting through players and, and scoring tries and setting them up and, and offloading and tackle busting. It just, it's just it hasn't happened, unfortunately. And um, yeah, take it down as a loss. So I've had my two losses this, this year, and that's picking up Talakai now. 
and missing out on Josh King. I suppose they're my two big ones, apart from, you know, as I said, a, a mixture of different things, which we'll speak about that in um in the in the points video that in the round results. But yeah, just a big one there. I think he's you know pretty much ready to sell. He doesn't play round thirteen. It's he's gonna have one more nicer game before then, but yeah, not ideal. I spoke about Trindle being a good option as well, and they just played yeah, the whole team just played bad, so he was never gonna do very well at all, but I didn't expect a twenty out of him, that's for sure, uh, with his track record. So yeah, th thankfully most people would have would have left him out. Just you know, you can see that just under one percent, but yeah, because he only had the two the two games definitely, and then probably around seventeen as well, uh, unless there's any other injuries. So that was that, and Moylan was a six, so it was just not great for the for the halves of the Sharks there. So that's that game, it's a really strange one. Roosters and the Eels, so a little bit uh, you know better scores all round overall on this one. We had Madison with eighty four, and he was electric with fifty five minutes there with the try. He's been super super awesome off the bench there with fifty five point eight average now, averaging better than he did last year. And thankfully no head knocks for for Madison, and let's, let's hope that uh, that stays the same way. Puppley, another actually I forgot about the uh, the big mistake that I made in the team, and and that was just waiting on on Puppley to. Yeah, just hit his average and, and <laughs> of about 60 and, and go from there. And he's now averaging 67 over the year. So he's had a spectacular one. And, and two tries for him to go along with all these you know, standard 53 and base and all the rest was uh, pretty incredible. He just con continues to do it. And if you captained him this week, this week you really dominated. Um, but you'll see my head-to-head -head team did that. That's for sure. Uh, Moses with 71. So great game for him as well. You know, against, a, against a decent side, obviously plenty of points in this game. But... For him to come out and do it against a, a team that he's not smashing, though they did lose this game, so that's um, great to see for Moses, uh, and averaging 55 for the year now, so he's, he's going to be a keeper for the season. He's not going to be playing Origin unless there's an injury to Cleary or something like that, so you just um, just plug him in, leave him there for the season. Big minutes for Takaho with a 54 points, Tupanua with 54 as well, uh, and Hargraves also with a try there, 50, 54 as well. Manu, if you selected him over, uh, over Teddy or over... Um, uh, who else the other options to turbo uh drink water reese walsh then you you won this round uh with that trade so well done and he didn't even have anything crazy obviously the three line break assist the one try assist but the eight tackle breaks uh the one offload and only the four negatives was uh what got you over the line there reedy with 50 as well teddy with 48 so got the try and the big run meters but just the lack of tackle breaks uh offloads and, and try assists in this one uh, was what stopped him from getting the 60, 70, 80 plus that he's been getting uh, you know, on a regular basis. So Ali with 48, so he had a, a really good game and he continues to improve. So that option of him being someone that you could put into your side is actually starting to increase now. He's going to be over 400k after this, but yeah, it would have been nice if he probably started this maybe, I don't know, now, like rather than yeah, a three to four week build up. But we did have to see it. Like you would have been taking a big risk if selecting him, um, and he continued to score like he did last year or at the start of the year. Then um, it would have definitely been a big risk that, that wouldn't have paid off. But yeah, you know, at this stage, it looks like he's going to score around that thirty-five to forty, and and definitely has some money to make uh, on that. Crichton with forty-six in a in a game where they win, and I think just the the amount of the amount of attacking stats, the amount of points scored in this game didn't suit. Uh, this type of player when he got you know negative eight there no attacking stats himself uh, and, and just the 41 in base so we'd like about the 50 in base and then uh, obviously with the negatives and a few attacking stats you get that better score from him it's unfortunate for him that's still up and down he's had that what one two eight two decent weeks now and uh, back back to where he was scoring at the start of the year unfortunately so that was the definitely the risk with Crichton and will he play origin is, is going to be the second one and that's you know just listen to TK uh, and the boys there on Talking League about uh, potentially Madison getting on the bench. And um, Fittler's always loved him as a player. He's obviously a great player, um, Maddo. Uh, but with his injuries and stuff last year, he was never going to make it last year. Um, and, but definitely yeah, an option coming into this year with, with Crichton as the other guy that very similar type of player. Um, very, very good <laughs> is the similar type. Uh, Dylan Brown, so 44 for him. Just a bit of a, not, a, bit of a nothing game. Obviously got the line break there, sneaky, uh, with 180 metres. Uh, and the 20 tackles there so negative eight overall we'd like some better scores from him but we'll take the 44 uh when there's other guys that definitely went worse in a few of these games so he had the 44 we had uh Penasini with the 37 so just a very standard game for him he's done a great job all year to be honest we can't really complain if you're playing uh Penasini with that 37 in the centers on a regular basis you're getting that consistency he's played every game so yeah you're really happy with that Gutho was the other option. He got 36, so just no attacking stats, which he needs, uh, which you would have expected in a, in a game where they got 31 points there. 
just didn't uh, didn't happen. Just didn't happen really. Uh, Watson with 35, so was kind of doing pretty well with his PPM for a good while there, and then dropped off near the end. Uh, that we're wanting him to get 80 minutes. If he can't get 80 minutes, he's not going to be worth it. What else we got here? We have Perham. So 18, if you picked him up, he obviously didn't go so well. And, and Radley off early uh, as well, unfortunately. So 17 minutes for him. If you still own him, I think you probably hold at this point, right? Because he's you know, he's going to be playing that first round by. And you could probably move him on after that would be my suggestion on that one. All right. For the best game of the round, the Cowboys are smashing the Tigers. And was that not one of the best flick passes you'll, you'll see? Uh, rivaling the great Benji of 05 ilk. When I uh, cry myself to sleep for about a year, when I was what ten years old, when the when when they, when they won that game on us, but yeah, incredible incredible finish, and and the Cowboys continue to play incredibly well. They're clearly in, in third spot now, which is actually incredible. I didn't uh, did not expect that at all this year, and yeah, the the young the young guys mixing with the old. I think Peter Higgins has been incredible this year, and and just slots in perfectly in that back line. You've obviously got him and Felt being more the veteran types on that right to go along with Townsend, and they're just working beautifully. Uh, and then you've got the the talent of, of Talangi uh, on that left-hand side um, and mixing in Leo Luki and then I. And, and there's just a lot of a lot of options across the park. And then just have Drinkwater at the back, Miso off the bench. Like, it's just just working beautifully at the moment. And Robson's having you know, great games as well. And that nice try which he didn't get, um, through to Cotter to, to go the length of the field and score was uh, was beautiful. And if you picked up any of Cotter, Robson, and Hastings over the last few weeks, you're absolutely loving life. Uh, Cotter getting, obviously, that early mark, which he, he deserves. That's 63 minutes there uh, with 56 in base, and that try was, was incredible. Robson was great. That base stats as well at 55. Hastings with a, a good game in amongst, you know, getting smashed 36 to 12. You'll definitely take that at the try assist uh, to go along with his 140 run meters and the 400 kick meters with a 3 4 drop out. So see, he's still having a good game in amongst them getting beat. Twiley with 50. Yeah, that Talangi game. What a, what a beautiful game. The try assist, two tries for him. All right, Kelma. 49 points in his 75 minutes. So we, we spoke about him yeah, last week after his poor game that he was a great chance of, of coming back. And, you know, he had the 45, 46, 40 or 43, 40 in those three weeks before. And there's every chance that he was just going to go back into that and, and play the bigger minutes and and do well. And the 43 tackles for one miss shows where he is normally at. And, and last week was a definitely an outlier. So if you own him, you're back into the money-making game, thankfully. And hopefully you can keep that up over the next bunch of weeks. If you hold on to the night, you, you did okay as well. A beautiful try again in the air. Um, just plucks it out of nowhere. Um, and just wanted to shout out the young fella for the Tigers who had that uh, nice try through the air as well on Dabu, which we'll speak about in a second. Uh, Gilbert was 42, so you're still owning him. You're getting about what you expect or what you need from him uh, at that price. Uh, good to see Stefano come back as well with a, some some better minutes and a better score, so better base stats through the middle. It was nice for him. Uh, Hess off the bench was, was solid there with 37 as well. Stapatoa. Not as good there with 30 in these 80 minutes. So he had a good couple of weeks before this. Um, yeah, Tupo was Junior Tupo uh, there with the 30 points and, and the nice try on Dabu. So what well on to him. Yeah, Drinky was the one. So 69 minutes for him uh, for 29 points. Got the, that sneaky try on the on the flick pass. But just, um, yeah, it was a fine game for him without being spectacular. They had a, a few other guys across the park to do the job for him. Lucy Leilua come back with the 27, so not ideal if you hold him. I doubt, you know, would many of people hold him? He's only 1.6% owned. Um, yeah, but just not not a, not a game for, for him, obviously, when they're getting beat. Harlan Lukey, if you got him still, the 26 is not ideal. The minutes are still fine, but, yes, the, this is going to be the issue when you have a guy that plays lesser minutes in uh, this type of game. If the ball doesn't come to him attacking-wise, then he's not, you're not going to get the tackles and the... Um, and just the generic run meters to, to get you to a good score. Um, and the big one here, Tamalolo. Wow. Okay. 31 minutes. In a game, where obviously, there was a bunch of tries in that first 30 minutes. So, you know, about five, I think it was, in that in that time. And, yeah, the tackles aren't going to be there. The running meters was fine. Um, it was all fine, except for the fact that he just didn't come back on. And they're, they're actually managing him really well. And this is just yeah, so the epitome of my season that I decided to, to bring him in this week and... Yeah, he has, his, he has his worst game, so uh, is what it is. This is happens in Errol Fantasy. You just got to go off the numbers, and, and he'd been scoring incredibly well and consistent, and then yeah, you, you, you pick him up, and he does this. So is what it is. We'll finish it on that note, guys. We'll um, 
we'll jump into the round results. So it was a pretty good round overall for, for the three squads there. Let me know in the comments how you guys went, how you finished up for that Sunday wrap, and uh, we'll catch you in that video. Have a good week, guys.